това ми е супер интересна тема, така че ще слушам с огромен интерес. И понеже няма нищо му за казване, както обикновено, мами. Hello everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do you understand my accent? Yeah. All right. Are you guys having fun? Have you had fun all day today? Yeah. 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 And all of you have learned a lot or learned something? Yeah. Uh, some people are laughing there, so I don't know what the joke is, but I'll ignore that. No, you didn't learn. All right. The question is. Are you and do you have the appetite to learn some more? Just for another 40 minutes. How many of you? Wow, that's a big number. That's a big number. Very encouraging. Thank you very much. He's already introduced me a bit, but uh, my name is Mani. I come from LJC. We call the London Java community. Most people call themselves London Jug or whatever Jug. We call ourselves LJC Jug. And we are involved in Java pretty much with everything to do with Java. In fact, if you want to know how involved we are in Java, this is how involved we are with Java. <laughs> we, you can look, you can look, we can look into somebody's eyes and say, I love Java. That's how involved we are. So, and, and in fact, it's not just us. You guys can do the same thing. You can print the same t-shirt, have your own logo on it, and say the same thing about Java. That's how passionate we are about Java. And that's why we are supporting this program called the Adopt Open JDK program. Now, unfortunately, the main leaders, who are still the leaders, they couldn't make it, uh, make it today because they have other commitments. Uh, one of them is Matain, who I've mentioned at the bottom of the slide. And that's the, his Twitter ID. In fact, if you guys are on Twitter, if you can just send a message saying, thanks, Matain. Sorry you couldn't come. You know, things like that so that he would feel nice. So they are the people behind this program. Now I'm come on behalf of them to spread the same word, to, to share the same knowledge with you guys. We have been working with the Adopt Open JDK for two years. In fact, yesterday was the two year anniversary of the Open JDK introduced to the community worldwide. So I was one of the attendees of that event two years ago. So I was like you guys sitting there. You know, I had my laptop, uh, I downloaded the source code, we had a virtual machine, we tried to build it. It was failing quite a few times because at that time the OpenJDK wasn't that all that great, you couldn't build it. It's different now. And from that day to now, lots and lots of changes have happened in my life because I've been involved with this project and lives of lots and lots of other people, not just in London, not just in London Java community, but worldwide. Um, it goes all the way to Oracle, and you can follow our tweet feeds to see all that we've been doing in the last two years. So it's not just me saying things. So I'd like to start off saying, what is the Adopt Open JDK? But before that, I have a different agenda. I wanted to drive this slightly differently than most presenters do. You know, I don't want to run through slides, tell you stuff, and you go home and you forget. I want to know from you how committed how motivated and how driven you are towards Java or towards the Open JDK. Okay, it might be new to you, you might not know about it, but it was the same thing for me two years ago. And since two years and now I'm here talking to people about it, I am passionate about it and I know a lot more about it now than I knew two years ago. And it has helped me in lots and lots of areas of my life, especially boosted my career. So. That's one thing I want to know from you. So you don't have to give me an answer. Just keep the answer to yourself. But just remember that at the end of the presentation, don't go home with, the, with an idea, oh, we had an open JDK presentation. Go home with an idea, we had a presentation that could change our lives. Especially when it comes to your career. Forget about the other areas of your life for the moment because we are at a professional meter. And, 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 and this is the truth. Lots and lots of people will say that to you because they are all basically doing the same thing in the community like myself. So that's my purpose. That's, that's my hidden agenda to find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually share two links with you. And if you have your notepad or your touchpad or smartphones, just go to, you see these two links here? 
this one and over here. Just just make a note of them, and yeah, you can take a picture of, and, and actually go to those links because they will take you to one of these documents. The first one, oh sorry, this one, second one will take you to to the get getting started kit. Basically, if you have never built the Open JDK before on your laptop, you can do it now you, with the help of this document. You don't have to do it now, just now here, but that document. And I'm going to. Be, I already tweeted this a, a, a week ago and this morning as well. But I'll do that again, and I'll pass it on to the organizers to send it to you. It's very important to have the right material in your hand. Believe me, there's a lot of frustration in the technical world when we don't have the right material in hand, don't have the right people to guide you to do things. And then you go home saying, this was boring, this was not nice. I don't like it. I'm not going to do it. It, it all boils down to that, having the right people, the right material, the right timing. And of course, there has to be a drive and interest and motivation from you as well. You know, it just, just won't happen. You just leave the right material next to you, and you just stand, and it just won't happen. You need to work with it. So those are the links to the right material. So that's the get, Getting Started Kit. I will not go through it in detail just now, because this is something you want to do in your spare time. And the other one, this one, I will try to cover bits of it in the evening today, just now. And this one's got links to the presentation. So that's why I said I'm going to drive this a little bit differently. I'm going to give you the presentations and all the material that I'm trying to cover in the next 45 minutes. If I'm not able to finish, you can take these material further on your own, not just that. We are available on the mailing lists. You've got someone from the JUG here available that you can contact, and they will contact us. And we've been able to answer lots of questions anyways. So we have a knowledge base of different questions you will have. And that way, when you use this material to learn about the OpenJDK, learn about Java, you won't be stuck. You won't be left alone by yourself. You will have something to go forward with. So. Make a note of the links that I mentioned, just these two links, because the other ones here below are actually the links within the documents that, that you will see. And with that, I'm going to switch to the, to the slides, basically. And I'm not going to talk a lot of it, because there's lots of words in each of the slides, and you'll, it'll bore you, you won't remember, and it's not something that you have to consume in the next 40 minutes. But I will try to give you a brief idea, and then quickly we will go through a hands-on demo of all the different things, or some of the different things you can do. So basically, the Adopt OpenJDK program was started to help improve participation in the OpenJDK project. So does everybody know what JDK is? Anybody who doesn't? How many who doesn't? OK. So do you know Java is open source, isn't it? It has been open source for the last 20 years. But what did that mean in the last 20 years when you say something's open source? It means you can have access to the source code. You can make changes to it. You can push it. You can have it reviewed. You can have it merged. And the cycle goes on. Oops, sorry. And that's not been the case with Java, actually, even though the intention has been so, simply because there hasn't been the infrastructure in place. There haven't been the people. There haven't been all the other things that needs to be there for that to happen. So in the last two, three years, even though the OpenJDK has been available longer than two, three years, in the last two, three years, developers like you and me in the community have got together and said, this is not happening anymore. We want to get into the, the source code, put in the features we like, remove the features we don't like, fix the features we think are, are, are a problem, and submit it back to make Java a better programming language to use, to make Java a better platform to run programs on. Are you complaining about Java? Fine. Your complaint stops right here, because now you have the source code that you can, you can scan through and fix. So we can stop complaining and be a bit proactive and, and, and take things in our own hands and, and fix it. So the, Open JD, the Adopt Open JDK program has been put together to encourage such initiatives to improve the Open JDK, because since Java 7, the Open JDK is the reference implementation of Java. What does that really mean? It means that you know Java is, is, is a bunch of files that helps you create programs. But that source comes from something like another re uh, repository, which is the Open JDK. And 
the future versions of Java, Java 8, Java 9, J Java 10, all will come from there. So that means before you even have Java on your machine, you have, you have, an, you have the opportunity to make a change to Java by, by contributing to the OpenJDK because whatever you contribute into the OpenJDK will trickle into the future versions of Java. And that's how things are, has been since Java 7. And it'll continue to be like that. So you have the power in your hands to make an improvement to Java. And that's exactly what the OpenJDK program is, is about, to, to encourage people to make an improvement to, to Java. So what, what have we been doing, basically? So we've been doing a lot of these things. We've been organizing hack days with the OpenJDK. Basically, hack day would mean we would call people, we would show them how to build the OpenJDK, and different people would have different problems. We would gather that and feed that back to, the, to Oracle, saying the OpenJDK doesn't build on this operating system. It has these problems, and, and so on and so forth. We've also had other things like uh, testing a lot of open source projects using the new version of Java. So before even Java 8 is released to the public, we have actually made an initiative of, of passing the binaries to the p different people and having them install different open source programs and build them and, and see if, if all of them work the, the way they're supposed to work and, and, and feed that back again to Oracle saying some of them are failing, some of them are working fine, and things like that. So there's a whole list of them. I'm not going to go into the detail. The slides are going to be with you, so you, you, can, you can have a look at them. Important question, I already said this some time back. Why should you get involved? You should get involved because you want to move the language forward. You want to move the platform forward. Remember you said there are problems with Java. Remember you said you don't like this about Java or that about Java. Or if you don't have problems with Java, then maybe you might want to add new features into Java. And that you can do by getting involved. Um, and then there's a whole list of other things. There's a whole list of other things that you could do. Basically, you want to sustain the language because as we are growing from, from one era to the next, we want new things in the language. And that is something you can also introduce by becoming involved. There's a lot to learn about, about the OpenJDK. I mean, I was just having a conversation with a couple of the JUG members, and, and they're saying there's, there's, this is, it's a huge, it, the OpenJDK is made up of lots of smaller projects. And, and in each of those projects, there's, there's lots to know about in each of those projects. And, and you cannot just know about it without uh, looking into them, into how to build them, how it runs, and, and, th and things like that. So that's, that's one, of the, one of the things. Um, also, with your participation, how is that going to help the OpenJDK? Um, when you when each one, of, each one of you is involved, you know, as, as a group, not individual, then, then you're able to push this product faster in, into the next stage. You know? uh, the, the whole build process, the whole uh, development process is improved by lots of people getting involved in this, in this project. And, and not just that, there, if there are, there's technical debt or there are issues in the, in the in the product, in, in the OpenJDK, then those come to the surface, and, and you're able to identify them and help fix them. So it's, it's a win-win situation for all parties concerned. And, and, and the list goes on, as, as, I, as I mentioned. Um, now, you would want to know, uh, is London Java community the only community involved, or are there other people involved as well? So there's a, there's a whole list. This is a little bit outdated list because there are three Java groups in Brazil. CE Jug is one of them, in, in addition to the two I've mentioned. That is also involved with this, and, and the list is endless because if you go to the, to the adopt openjdk.java.net site, you can see on the wiki there's a whole list of people who are involved in this project. So we've been busy with this for two years. I did say that, right? So what have we been doing? What difference have we brought into, into Java? So have, has everybody heard of the date and time class in, in Java? Yeah? 
So that's that's known by the JSR 310. It's it's not fully out yet because it's it's in Java 8, uh, but you can download uh, prototypes of it and use it. Um, same with lambdas is waiting to be released through Java 8, but you can really you can access it through the early edition of the JDK and start using the uh, start using lambdas. These two have been some these two have been significant additions that have been made through through participation of the different groups, the different people and different developers. They all worked together. They came up with the idea, they presented it, the idea, and they put together a team and they started discussing it. They started, you know, taking the, the project further. So 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 those those are the two and, and there are there have been lots more. Like, you know, when you build the open JDK, you get lots of compiler warnings or you used to get a lot of compiler warnings. People have sat down together and helped reduce these compiler warnings. Again, that's something some people mentioned earlier would want to get involved in. And it's a very interesting subject. And I have been involved with that some time back. So now is the mood question. I've said all of these things. I've got you all excited. Uh, you, don't, you don't sound very excited, but I'm sure some of you are. And I hope, I hope you are excited. How do you, how do you participate? So it's just a, it's just, there's just a link there that you go to. And, and you either join the mailing list that's mentioned on there, or contact your local jug. So uh, does everybody know their local jug? Is everybody a member, or some people are members of the local jug? Are you, is, do you know how to get in contact with your local jug? Do you not know how to get in contact with your local jug? Anybody? OK, so Ivan and, and Martin are here. They are members of the jug. If anybody who doesn't know how to get in touch with their local jug can have a chat with them. And they are, they're very much involved with the OpenJDK project themselves. So they can also explain to you what, what this project is about, how you get involved, what are the benefits, what do you got to do, and the whole works. Now, there's, there's, these are some important notes here. Um, you know, when you, when you work in a team, or when you work with a group, or when you work with a jug, there are some important elements that, that need to be taken into consideration. And that is, you need to be able to communicate with each other and coordinate with each other. Open JDK or, or jug or, or user group or community does not mean you all work individually and everybody else knows what you're doing. You need to all talk to each other and, and agree on things and disagree on things and agree to disagree and like things that if somebody's doing or dislike things that somebody's doing and, and express it and explain it. And, and so that's, that's important. You've got to do that. And we don't want to overwhelm the open JDK committers. So what I mean by that is the people at Oracle who maintain the code base, they will be receiving feedback from you. But if you're organized, then only one person needs to give that whole collection of feedback to them. But if you're not organized, if everybody starts sending a mail and hundreds of them or thousands of them worldwide send the same mail to the people at the OpenJDK uh, team, then they will be overwhelmed. And that's something we don't want to do. So that's, that's suggestions about overwhelm. Um, so what do you do after you join? the Adopt Open JDK. So one of the things people do is they join the mailing list and they post a question, hey, I'm new, I'd like to do stuff, what do I do? And then, then we all chip in and say, oh, this needs to be attended to, that needs to be attended to. Or you can go to the wiki, there's a wiki on, on the site, and you can see there are different goals that are outlined. So you can pick a goal. Now, if you like to work with Jigsaw, you can say, I'd like to work with Jigsaw. Or if you want to work with Java Docs, you can work with that. If you want to work with the build and infrastructure, you can do that. And then come back to the mailing list and say, hey, I have selected this goal, and I'd like to work on this. And this is what I want to do. Can anybody tell me what is the next thing to do? So that, that's how, it, how the ball goes rolling. Once you send out a message, then somebody will come back to you. So that's, we've been doing this for quite some time. And again, there, you need to be organized and coordinate and all that stuff. And that's, so, so, so the, the, the goals are, are categorized in three different levels, starter, intermediate, and advanced. So at the starter level is, is all these things that's mentioned here. You basically do all the things like give general feedback. You say, I don't like the string class. You don't know much about it how to fix it, but you can say what, that you don't like this feature, or you can say you like this feature. So that's the feedback, and that's a very starter level thing. Or you can do something like what I'm doing. 
evangelize. Tell people about it. Tell people there's open JDK, you have problems in Java, there's a whole open source, source code available and you can fix it or you can do something to fix it. And I know, or you can say, I know people who, are, who can help you fix it and, and all that stuff. So that's one of the things you can do. And, 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 and quite a few other things like organize hackathons and bugathons and things like that. Um, that, that's a little bit involved, but you could do that. Then there's an intermediate level. Remember I mentioned about Jigsaw earlier? Now that, that's categorized as an intermediate level work. So you can get involved with the Jigsaw project. You can get involved with writing tests. Who, write, who likes writing tests? Test-driven development. Okay, so we want an agile touch to the Java code base. Because if you open up the source code for Java, you will see that the code is written in a different style. The style was great and good for, at that time, but moving forwards, we need to make, make it, uh, bring it in alignment with time, isn't it? Like you learn new things, you don't just stick with your old things. You're learning agile, tomorrow there'll be something else. You're learning test-driven development, behavioral development, and so on and so forth. But there'll be something else, like there's reactive programming, that's big, the new buzzword in the market. And, and, and people are doing that as well. So people are going doing functional programming. So you've got to move with time. Similarly, we've got to bring the J Open JDK source code with time because a lot of the source in the Open JDK source code is from Java 3, 4, 5, 6. We want to bring it to 7 and 8 so that you know, all the new nice features of Java is in the Java source code itself because the Open JDK is primarily 70 to 80% Java. And there's 20% C, C++ assembly in it and some, some awk and, and, and bash scripts in it. So, so it's Java that we're using to run Java and, and, and so we need to bring, keep that Java up to date and in line with the current time. So that's, that's a whole lot in the intermediate level. And the advanced level is of course you can start working with the java.compiler. You know, the java.compiler helps you pull out stuff from your source code and put it into some HTML web page that you can browse through and say, oh, this function works like this and takes these parameters and so forth. There's also the build and continuous integration server. So, you know, the open JDK system can be built on various operating systems, but there's a team that's constantly changing the source code in the background. So we need to have a continuous integration system that keeps a track of when open JDK is, is, is green and when it's red, you know, when it breaks. You, you guys all understand continuous integration, is that right? Okay, so, so that's, that's I don't know, there's a project by itself and it's an advanced project. And then there's lambdas as well. Have you, everybody's heard of lambdas? Anybody's used lambdas? So it, that is Java 8, is that right? How did you use lambdas? You downloaded the binary of Java 8? Is that how you use, okay. So you guys, you guys, I'm just, I'm just testing you out. I'm just testing you out. I just need to know, I just need to get some feedback that uh, I am saying stuff and I, I understand you understand what I'm saying. That's all I need to know. I know you understand it. I just need to, it's just my personal, it's just my personal, um, how do you say, what's it, suspicion or insecurity. Um, so basically I would say, finally, this is the last slide, thank God. I say let's change the Java ecosystem together. Can we? Yes, so <laughs> that's really good, thank you. So to basically, how do you do that? You, 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 you first get onto the, to this um, site. Join the mailing list, the, the site's got a whole list. Does anybody have a smartphone here? Has anybody tried going onto that site? Can anybody tell me if they've gone? Did you see that? Did you, did you, have you gone there? Have you seen the wiki? Do you, did you get onto the get started page? If, if you, yeah, if you do that, you'll see all the different things you can do to get started with the, with the, with the project. And, and with that, I'd like to say thanks for reading the slides. Um, the thanks goes also to the person who's created the slides who couldn't be here today, Matain again, and uh, that's his Twitter idea I've been suggesting, right? To send him a tweet, but has anybody sent him a tweet? Nobody? I'll, I'll send him a tweet later on. Okay. So. We are 20 minutes into this talk, and we've finished the slides. That's, that's cool. Um, this is something else I wanted to show you, which was a cool graphic that we came across. I need you for Java development. You, you, each one of you. Because I can't do it alone. You see, 
Each one of me goes to these different cities to talk about OpenJDK. But I'm just one person. But you guys are like, what, 100 people here just now? And then each one of you know uh, another 100 people? And, and, and together, so, so do, you know the, do you know the statistics of Java? Um, there are 10 million Java developers. And each one of you fall in that 10 million group, including myself, OK? Um, there are 1 billion Java end users. That means you, me, are also using devices that end up having Java on it. We're using Java somehow. And there are 3 billion devices. So that means each one of us has at least one or two or three devices, devices that, that runs Java on it. So you can imagine the power and the impact you have when you get involved in a project like this, because you can tell your coworkers, your friends, your employers, that you have fixed the string class, or you have added an extra feature to the lambdas, and you are using that function. You know that function you're using in, in lambdas, or in the string class, or in random, or whatever? I have created that. And you can, sh not I, but you. And, and, and you can show them by sh sending them the link to the HG, or, or Bitbucket, or, or, or Mercurial, or, or uh, Git. Um, change list because the chain set will have your name on it so that's the that's the pride you can you can uh, take for yourself because not everybody has the opportunity because it takes a little bit of of effort in that because here's here's how the process works you take the source code you, you look at it and you say say you're trying to fix something because some problems been identified somewhere in the source code you change that part of the source code it needs to be a sensible reason why you're working in that piece. You just don't, just don't go and change anything. And then you create a patch from that after you've tested it and all that stuff, you know, and you send it to the mailing list, the OpenJDK mailing list, where the people from Oracle are basically uh, screening patches. And they will look at your patch. If it gets accepted, it will get merged into the OpenJDK source code, which then further trickles down into Java 8, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And, and when it gets accepted, because you sent that, and it will have your name and email address on that patch, and that stays as a record. So you can tell your employer that I have actually helped improve Java. You were complaining about, this, about so and so class the last time, I've actually, or you, or your jug, or a group of people, or your team has helped change or improve that aspect of Java. Who wants to do that? OK, so th the ones who've, who've raised your hands over there, if you don't know how to do that, Ivan and Martin are right here. They just raised their hands. They are the people to talk to. I mean, you can always, of course, this is, this is the, the URL address you, I requested you to go anyways. But you're, you're also welcome to contact them. Um, so we've got some time in hand. I think it's about 15 minutes. And I'm going to actually try to show you what we mean by building the open JDK. So I've got a whole uh, recipe list here, which of course I will be share I've already shared with you. Um, I don't know how the connection is here, but I will try to is everybody familiar with VirtualBox? Is everybody familiar with VirtualBox? Do you use them a lot? What do you run? Ubuntu? What do you run? Mac OS? Windows? What do you run on it? Ubuntu. Great choice of operating system to run. Uh, I'm having some issues with the mounting here. Oops. Guess what? I'm going to show this on my native machine. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a bit uh, cheeky. Uh, can everybody see that screen? Yeah? I'm sorry, the, the font's a bit darker, but I can make it bigger. Yeah, I'm doing Control Plus, and it's doing crazy stuff here. So. It might be some other key combination. Oh, 
uh, which one is that? Zoom in. Oh, control plus plus. See, it doesn't work, but if I do the zoom in, it does. Thank you very much. So, so that's, that's really cool, isn't it? So when you download the OpenJDK, that's the folder in which it gets created. Oh, there's a set of instructions you have to follow. I've, I've skimmed through it. This is like I've brought you in the middle of the process, and I'm going to take you from there because we've only got 15, 20 minutes, and, and I want to show you something. So normally, I wouldn't run this. How's the Wi-Fi connection here? Is it good? Can I, can I run this? Let's see. So basically, once you have that installed on your system every day or every so many hours, you can run that command, get sources. And what it will do, which you can see, is going through all the repos. So you see the open JDK is made up of a number of different projects. I will show it to you in a second what the, those different projects are. You run Java, but behind the scenes, how Java is put together, no one cares to find out. Oh, it's, there's so much to know about Java anyways that we don't have the time. But today, you'll see. OK, I've got to run that again because it looks suspicious. <laughs> yeah, that's, there's a little bit of a niggle with that command. So it looks nice now. So what, what happens is, I won't go into the technical details of it, but what it does is it pulls through all the different repos because the open JDK is made up of a small number of repos. So the get source goes to all those repos and says, you have changes, you have changes, you have changes, you have changes, give me. And it brings all the changes down and it puts together in, in one it looks like a repo, but it's just a fake repo, a container. And that's what it has done. For those who are interested, go into that source code. And that, that is available in this directory. Uh, I can point it out to you here, right here. And the instructions on how to get to this point is on our website, if you go in through, through the different. And if you, if you have problems with that, contact Ivan or me. You know, I have my Twitter ID somewhere. I'll give it to you. Uh, well, actually. I forgot to mention, I've got these handouts as well. So if you're having problems with any of those slides that I've mentioned, you can come to the desk and take one of these handouts. They're also available at the registration. Um, and I've got these stickers. They're really nice stickers. And it's a very good example for your jugs to create stickers like this. And they look really nice on laptops. Who, who would like to have some of these? OK, so you have to come to me, because you know you are lots of them. So. By the time I get to you, it'll be like 20, 30 minutes, and we'll be thrown out of this room. So you, at the end of it, you have to come to me, and you'll get as many stickers as you want. I'm going to be a little bit fast and show you some OpenJDK stuff. So just now what I've done is I've tried to update my local repo with all the chain sets that's, that the OpenJDK team at Oracle have done. And the next thing I'm going to do is it's, this is a standard command you have to run in the Unix world. If you, if you have a project, you need to run the configure. Because if, if you don't run the configure, at least in this case of this project, then the next command that I'm going to run now will fail at some point. So I always run the configure, and it's called bash configure. That's an easy one. Now see, I told you I was going to share you some document with you, and I have. This document is called Adopt Open JDK Thoughts, Ideas, and Experiences. And that's got all those commands that you need to know right there. You see, you got, got the get source there. It tells you what the get source does. So if you don't have a laptop and you still want to see what it does, you can just look at this document. Then you run the configure command, bash configure. And it tells you what it does or it's supposed to do. So if you're at home, you don't have contact with anybody, you can look at the screen and say, oh, it should have done something like this. But I'm getting something else. There must be something wrong. Either I am doing something wrong or there's something wrong somewhere else. It's not doing as expected. So that's, again, in this document. So see, we have put together this to make it easy for each one of you to get involved. Am I going too fast? Do you not understand anything I'm saying? No, no, you've got to be honest. No, you've got to be honest. No, honestly, do you not? All these things I've said all this while, have you understood every bit of it? Be honest. If you haven't, be honest, because we can have a chat later on, and, and I can explain this to you again. Because I'm not coming tomorrow to give a talk again, but I just want to make the best of the time I've been given here. Uh, there's one more thing. I didn't instructed people to install the tree command. That's a very interesting command. Who knows about the tree command? There's avail the each, each of the operating system has its own version available, and they all do the same thing. So you, I found out you can... You can um, so I have put that together in this other document, which, you'll also, which you also have. 
uh, where is it gone? Sorry. Yeah, install tree command in Linux. You got to do it by using that command here, which you all probably know. And on the Mac OS, it's three commands. Mac is always difficult. And there's also a video to do it. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not putting Mac down. And Windows, it's already built into the operating system. Wow, they thought about it. So that's, that's the tree command. And I use it heavily in the OpenJDK project because it's a huge, it's about 80,000 files, including directories and everything. You can't really you know, just do DIR or LS and, and get the whole list. So I use the tree command, and this is what I do. Ooh, sorry. This is what I do. I do tree minus L, that's level 1, D, and then I get that output there, which is what I'm going to do here. Well, sorry, not that command. Actually, whilst I'm showing you that, I'm going to say make images. This is an important one. So we've got about seven minutes to go. So are we going to get thrown out of this room after 5.45? Where's the organizer? Are you going to throw us out? out of Okay, so we can, we can go a little bit over time because I'm really excited and I want to show this. Who else is excited to see more, more technical stuff? Honest, right? The, the, the proof will be you will still be in this room after 5.45 because if you leave, then you have lied to me. <laughs> is that right? Okay, and then you don't get one of these stickers. Simple, <laughs> logical, because if you walk out of this place, you don't come to me to take these stickers. So, more stickers for me, but not good for you. And you don't get these handouts either. I can take them back to London. I don't know what I'll do with them. But. So that's the tree command, and that's the output. But I'll also show you the output here, because you need to believe me, isn't it? So great, I opened up another window. Isn't that interesting? So what is it? Tree minus L. Minus L means level, means which levels in the directory you want to see. And after that, you can say which folder you want to see. What was that command, actually? Oh, minus D. What is minus D? I forgot. Oh, minus D is only directories. So that tells you the build directory has got only one level. But actually, I don't care. The build directory, I want to see all the other levels. That's a whole lot. So I do care. So I'm going to say three. So the build directory actually has got a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to actually show you a screenshot because it's difficult to navigate here. So when I did level one, that's all I got in the root and see what are the different projects that are in there. Some of them are not projects. I'll tell you which ones are not projects. The ones that are not projects is the build. It's not a project. It's a folder where the artifacts get stored. We will see that in a second. Common is not a project because that's where all the common files are. Corba is a project. Hotspot is a project. JaxP is a project. JaxWS is a project. JDK is a project. We will see what that is. JT report and JT work are not projects. Lang tools is a project. It's a dependency. Uh, Make is not a project. Nashorn is a project. Who knows about Nashorn? Who knows what's Nashorn? Can you tell me what Nashorn is? Aha, uh -huh, it's the JavaScript runtime on the JVM. There are other runtimes on the JVM, <laughs> but this is the, Java, the, the, the JavaScript engine for the JVM. It's interesting. You will see. You will see. Then test, hands-on, and all these other folders are not projects. They are just they are just folders that I have created. Now, see, when I did tree level two, it tells me more about what's in the build. And that's interesting to know. What, when you build the OpenJDK, it's interesting to know, or you build any project in the world, it's interesting to know what are the artifacts and what do they mean. Because otherwise, you're not doing a good job of understanding your project, understanding your system. So in, in the case of this, these are the artifacts. We won't go into details at the moment, because there's another point I will tell you that. But we will go into the details of the build folder. Remember I just said a second ago? So the first one is Corba. What's it stand for? Common Object Request Broker Architecture. Who has used it? The Java version. I haven't. I'm just raising my hand. So yeah, there's one person over there. Great. Then, you know, remember we said we are trying to get involved, or we want to get involved in the OpenJDK project because we want to advance the platform and the language. Because Java, the platform, and Java, the language, aren't the same thing, and they are the same. So the platform is like the virtual machine on which not just Java, but other JVM languages run, like Scala, Clojure, and you name it, Groovy, Python, Py, yeah, J what is it? What's the other one? Uh, I forget all the JVM languages. Anyways, you know them. You know the ones I'm talking about. So Hotspot is the platform. 
that I'm talking about. So by getting involved in the Open JDK project, you're helping improve, improve Hotspot, the, plat the Java platform by itself. Then you remember I ran this command, make images. Who remembers that? Oh, it's already finished. Look, it only took two minutes to. So basically, images according to the terminology of Open JDK is, so you know I mentioned earlier JDK. So you, we all download and we all have been downloading the JDK or the JRE from Oracle's website if you want to install. You know, when, when I say, can you install Java on my laptop, what do you do? You install an installer, but the installer installs either a JDK or a JRE, depending on what kind of installer you've installed. So if it's a JRE installer, it'll install JRE. If it's a JDK installer. Do you know the differences between JDK and JRE? Great, I'm not going to go into the details. So that make images command has actually created both the JDK and the JRE for you, which are the images of Java in that folder. You can see over there. Oops, sorry. That's me. Oh, where did we go? Oh, no. We've lost that screen. Sorry, here it is. So if you can see that folder over there, JRE image and J J2 SDK image, they are exactly the same thing when you install Sun's installer. And I'll show it to you in a second by going into it. But before that, let me finish the other bits. Then there's JAXP, JAXWS, which is, again, it stands for what it does. JDK, which is the language. You know, Java, the language, all the classes are in that folder. And then you have a helper project called Lang Tools, which contains all the different things that helps build and compile the different parts of the, of the open JDK. And finally, you have NASON, which you know, somebody rightly pointed out over there. It is basically the JavaScript runtime for the JVM. That's another JVM language. Uh, so I've done is I've done a tree of the hotspot, and you should go home and do this because it's interesting to see what's in hotspot. Some of the names are still old, like you'll have you'll find in lots of places in the Open JDK the use of the terminology Sun. Uh, that's because you know Oracle's been a Sun product uh, since before um, it was taken over. Now there's more things to see about the hotspot folder, um, and the homework for you is to find out which file and folder in the hotspot directory contains all the flags, you know the plus and minus xx flags that you use to tune your GC. They are stored in one of those or two of those files. And, and I have highlighted, can you all see that? Sorry. That's the, I'll put them as a link. So you, that's, I've put both the links in there. So I'll actually will highlight it as a link so you can see it's, a, oh, I can't change it, sorry. So that's one link and that's the other one. Um, but these are links on the web. But the idea is to find out from the hotspot folder which are those files which store the definition of uh, the different flags. And I actually have it here. Can you all see it? So if you go through it, I'm going to try to go through it quickly and point out command line flags. Do you see that class? That handles. And then, then further on, you can see the different, there's lots of documentation in here. So if you want to understand the deep dive information about what each of those flags mean, you can actually go through all of this. I'm not going to go through it now. It's huge. There's, a, there's another one for, this one is for G1. OK, that's, the, that's, that's um, you know, the GC, G, G1 GC garbage collector. And that's got the flags and the information of the different flags right in here. And this, see, this is very well documented and very well formatted. So, and that's a lot of information. And a lot of this is not there in the manuals because the source code comes first. You know, they say, read the F manual. They actually mean read the source code because your source code is your manual to start with. And then your printed manual, which might be a, bit, a little bit outdated or might not be the same as what's in your source code. So read the source code. If you really, really want to know something, read the source. And I take a lot of interest in, in these code snippets. And I would suggest you do the same, because you will enjoy it, especially when it's well documented like this. You know, If there's no documentation, I'm not suggesting that, because it's going to be harder to read. So that's, that's in that document. And the homework for you guys, because I will be doing this anyways, 
and then putting it back in this document is what are those files that contain the flags. I am actually going to show you an exercise now because we, we are told we can go over and we won't be thrown out of this room. I am going to change a small bit of a class in the OpenJDK which Java depends on. You know the random class if you want a random number you say random next or random next int and you get a random number back. I am going to change that to give me the same constant number. I am going to write a program that uses that class and you will see when I call random next it does not give me a random number it gives me that number that I am going to type in there which means that you me and everybody can change Java and improve it like make the random number class give a constant number uh, is that a good improvement or what big one. a big improvement why be random be constant you know everybody tells me don't be random be focused so that is our focus that is a joke random class needs to do what needs to do we don't change the random class this is just a demo. Okay, so that is my piece of code, I will tell you what you got to do, you go into this folder which I am going to do now, you pick up the random.java class which is exactly this is where it is, if you use Linux you use the command gedit, you go into the editor and I will tell you exactly you find you look for this block of code protected int next, uh, the reason I picked that up is because all the uh, other higher upper level functions calls this or this calls other functions as well and then I comment out the existing code that is there in that function and then I just make it return what I want to return. Of course you do not put those blue things in because that is just illustration. Then I write my own changed random Java which is sorry I'm, I went too fast so I am going to just leave this here. Do you follow what I did here? Do you follow? Does everybody follow what I did here? Who does not follow what I did here? I do not follow. I, it does not really matter whether I follow or not, you guys need to follow, not me, I am just one person, you guys are a big group, everybody of, of you needs to follow. Um, so that is the open JDK, huh? this random class belongs into the open JDK forest, that is Java, right, so I have changed a bit of Java and then I do is I create a new program which I would create anyways which actually uses the same random, what is it, java.util.random is that right yeah java the util the random class and what it does is it creates a new class called new random it says it calls out to next int now you will ask me you changed int but why are you calling next int because internally next int calls sorry next int calls next then I print out that number and then I say I yeah, will create I will call it once again because you know it might be random that it is 100 how do I know it is printing out 100 every time I call it again and it will print the same thing and then I just print a message changing the JDK is not just enough you have to run this command make images because you have changed the source code and you have not done anything else the images are still the same you make so the make images is actually if you remember if you go do you can you can you see what I mean by make images yeah so those two folders over there JRE2 image and JDK2 they are going to get rebuilt because I am going to you will see I am going to use them to compile the code that I have just written and build it and run it all that within the open JDK I am not using any Oracle JDK at the moment I am just doing everything with, with the open JDK. Who is finding this interesting? No lies here all right oh god quite a few people I am sure lots of people are here so I am sure there is uh, there is interest here so then I do make images and I run my program see I have written a small bash script which says build and run the change and I will show you what that does in a second. So basically all that does is it goes into it goes into the build Linux normal you see you, you, you remember these two folders I just mentioned to you earlier you remember them who does not remember this sorry I am not even able to make that bold look look it is going all wrong who does not remember so I am actually running the programs that are within that image so I am running so you see there is a java compiler right in there I am making it compile my changed program my changed random dot java program and I am also then running the java uh, command from within the image to run that program I am going to just show you a demo now and then you will see what I what I mean. So let's where did I go? 
Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go into that folder which I'm already in and I'm going to say, I'm just going to copy that from here because that's easier. Four minutes, cool. All right, so, so you see it directly brings me to the next. All I'll do is, I'll comment that out. I've got four minutes, so I've got to do it real fast. Um, I've saved it. Be my guest. Does that make you happier? I've done that. It's 128. Okay. The next thing I've got to do is, uh, so that's, yeah, it's 100 here, but you know, you suggested 128, so I'll do 128. I already think I already think I have this program on my the other program that I need. See, it's already there because I, I was trying to demonstrate to myself whether I can prove it or not. So I'm going to not rewrite that because we've only three minutes now, isn't that right? Goodness, time is just running against us. So that program contains that file that I showed you contains the source. It's using exactly the same class. We're not doing any voodoo here, okay? So don't be don't be like I'm trying to do some magic. And I'll say make images because. The change here. So if you see the build system is so smart, it's not building everything all over again. It's only building the bits. So it's saying compiling the JDK because that's what I change. It's not compiling everything else because it knows it doesn't need to. It, the dependency system is so smart in the infra build system that it knows what to change and what not to change, what to build and what not to build. So it's, it's compiling now. It's going to be more than three minutes and we're going to get thrown out of here. But so it's, it's building that. We're going to wait for it to finish. Yeah, the JDK is big, so it takes a little bit of time. I'm going to quickly check if I already have the two minutes. You're counting. My goodness. OK, so we, ha we have that command in hand. So we are a little bit ahead of a game. But the JDK hasn't come back yet. Well, it said it would take two minutes to build the, the JDK, which, which means we, we might be out of time. But um, I will quickly run that once this finishes. I will quickly run that. Who's following what I have been just doing? Can you go home and do this? Because the, those two documents that I have over there ha has, the, has the steps in it. Can you, if I, if, of course, I've shared the links. If, I, if you take those links, can you, because the document's got the lists of things you got to do. It's got the screenshots of what the output should look like. And it's got all the steps in it. And basically, you should be able to just do this on your own, because it's that dead simple. So if there are some more things on the list, like you know, changing hotspot and other things, and JT reg and all that. But we're not going to go through that. OK, this looks like it's not giving us a green signal. Can I get like an extra minute or two till that comes back? Because I really want to run that batch file. Yeah, I know. If, that, if, if, if the OpenJDK system comes back saying, yeah, some out of uh, 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 good. So it is responding, which is a great thing. OK, so it's coming back with. So you guys are following what's happening. I changed a small file in the, in the JDK, the JDK that you download. I changed a small file in it, and I rebuilt the whole open JDK. And it's, what it does, did it, it went and scanned all the things that need to be built. Because random.java got built, it went and rebuilt all of that, rebuilt random Java. There hasn't been any compiler errors, because if there were, you would see it on the screen. So it's now telling you, don't worry about those things. It's, so it's finished. Three minutes. Goodness, it's one minute more than I was given. Thanks for, for doing that. There were some errors with the bombs. Don't worry about that. The, if this bill comes with a success, so those, those if this bill comes with Yeah, and, and, and each one of you will fix that. It will help us fix that, isn't it? It's open source, isn't it? So now we run that. 
What is it? It's voodoo or what? <laughs> you said 128. I put 128. I would have put another number. You see, I'm not printing that hard code. I can show you the... the um, that doesn't print anything like 128. Those things literally, honestly run those commands. Yeah. God, it, this is also not working now anymore. Anyway, so, so it has actually gone to the image that I've just built and has run the JAVAC, which compiles the, the change random Java, which is the one that's, that's calling the random class. And then it goes to Java, the, the one I've just built seconds ago, and it says, run that class that I've just compiled with my image that I've just built. And it runs that, and that class is actually using the Java JDK, which has just been changed. Voila. You can write your own virtual machines, can you not? Who can write their own virtual machines if this is the case, if you have, your, if you have the source code to the OpenJDK system? I don't see one single hand going up. <laughs> Why not? You can write, be ambitious. Yes, you can. If I can change the random class and make it come up with constant numbers, why can't you do the virtual machine? That's just the next, just, just slightly more advanced than this, isn't it? Cool. So there's, there's more stuff. There's more stuff that can be done. And there's, this document is a live document. It's going to be shared with you. You can do all that stuff. Um, basically, I have final words. I want to thank the London Java community, because without them, I wouldn't be here. And I also definitely want to thank the organizers, because without them, I wouldn't be here, uh, including Ivan and Martin. They've been working with me for the last three weeks to organize this. Um, final words are, I need you for JDK development. And I is not I, it's the Duke in there. And you can put your, you can send your feedback uh, to my, wait, the page doesn't want, want to stay. Your feedback means a lot to us, okay? So you can send our feedback to the Twitter address there. You can also follow our, us on Twitter on the Adopt Open JDK. Um, and of course, I have, I have final thanks to Matain, who couldn't be here. He's lent us the slides, the LJC jug, Oracle, because Oracle is supporting this. We can't just go out and talk about the Open JDK if we don't have supporters from the maintainers of the, of the, of the, of the source code and things like that. Uh, with that, I'd like to end it. Thank you very much for your attention. You guys have been very interactive and lively. I wasn't expecting to hear feedback and you know, fun and all kinds of other lies as well. So uh, uh, I'll remember that. And that's it. And thanks for the extra time. Thank you very much.